Welcome to Hamer Reviews, my name is Christopher Hamer and today we're going to be looking at the October generation figures for my solar PV array, have a look at the consumption, how much of a role the battery played and follow on from the September video. Now for those of you that were waiting for this video, I apologise, uh, I got a bit delayed as I thought I might, uh, but the plus side is that you're going to have the October video and November video in close succession as I'm going to be recording them both today and release them within a week of each other. Hopefully December's won't be quite so delayed. So the North and South arrays for uh, October had quite a good month. Um, in total, they produced 387 kilowatt hours of power and the South facing array, uh, each panel produced an average of around 32 kilowatt hours uh, plus and the North facing array around 10 kilowatt hours each. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the performance. The fact that the north facing array was still able to produce a third of the power of the south facing array, I think is pretty good going for October coming towards the end of the year. Of course, October means autumn and autumn means worse weather. And that's certainly something that was true in this particular month with 10 days of rain and a lot of cloud coverage, which meant we only really had a couple of days of outstanding um, solar production. And in fact, there was only one particular day where we were able to uh, really hit a peak of 22.5 uh, kilowatt hours in just one day. Uh, the rest of them were pretty much all less than 20. Um, and even the majority, uh, we only just broke 10 kilowatt hours. So it was a more challenging month in terms of the weather. Now, coming back to those main figures. So we had 387 kilowatt hours produced uh, across the entire system. Now, of those 387 kilowatt hours, I was able to make use of 342 kilowatt hours of power. So again, uh, we're still sending 44 kilowatt hours to the grid this month. Um, and it was even worse than that because I still didn't have my Octopus outgoing um, tariff set up. So I gave all of that away for free, um, but such is life. I also left the hot tub uh, connected that month for various reasons. And so to add insult to injury, the house actually used 605 kilowatt hours of power. And um, we had to import 43% of that from the grid. So just over 260 kilowatt hours. So it was certainly a more challenging month and we used a hell of a lot more power than I thought we would. Um, but the good news is the hot tub's now off and we used a lot less in November and indeed are using less in December too. So let's drill down into some of the specific days figures and a little bit of a closer look at the north and south facing array as well, which I think is gonna become more and more interesting as we head into November and then December. So as already mentioned, the best day that we had uh, was October the 8th, where we produced um, 22.5 kilowatt hours of power. That was pretty good, and it was towards the beginning of the month. We'd only had a couple of bad days, and I was pretty optimistic about the rest of the month. Now, <laughs> perhaps um, that tempted fate, but pretty much from that point onwards, we had a couple of days where we managed to get to about 18 kilowatt hours of power, and then it just dropped off to 12 uh, from the 13th onwards and didn't recover until the 18th, uh, almost a week later, where we hit 18 kilowatt hours again. But again, from that point onwards, we just had pretty much days that were 15 or less. And towards the end of the month, um, we even had a, a couple of days where we hit like 5.8 kilowatt hours. So the weather is starting to play a huge role. Now, the LG panels that I have fitted are pretty good in the shade, um, i.e. when it's cloudy, and they still produce some power, which is good, especially in October where the days weren't terribly short yet. Um, but there's definitely an element of you're going to lose out a lot. Now, if you had bifacial panels, I think you would win a bit back. Um, and it's a shame that we weren't able to fit the bifacial panels that we had planned to. Um, but you know what? The fact that we were still able to cover the majority of our power usage um, is something that's obviously quite nice. Now, thinking about it, if we had had the hot tub switched off in October, um, I don't think we would have had to pull much from the grid at all because, spoiler alert, in November we only actually used 300 kilowatt hours of power. So that hot tub is pretty much accounting for 300 kilowatts of, of extra usage. And except, you know, for a few days where we had very low production, we probably wouldn't have needed much power from the grid. So that was a bit of a shame. 
the fact that we still had days where we were exporting relatively large amounts, like on a couple of days, you know, there's a couple of kilowatts being exported. Um, I, I think that's kind of surprising. Um, I didn't expect to be exporting a huge amount um, in October. In fact, I didn't think we'd export anything. And, you know, the Solar Edge um, platforms tell me I exported 12% of the power we produced, even with the battery. Uh, so that's quite interesting to me. And the battery in general just plays a huge role um, because we were able to run 67% of the power that we used through the battery. So although it was being produced during the day, because I'm simply not using that much power all the time, even with the hot tub connected at that point, um, the battery meant that we were charging the excess into the battery. So on days we had a good day, battery was obviously hitting 100%. And in fact, on many days, the battery was still hitting, you know, 80% or more. That gave me a lot of positive feeling about the fact that the system was doing what I wanted it to do. And in fact, if I flick through the actual figures here, yeah, the majority of, day, of the days were sort of above six kilowatt hours coming from the battery. And on some days we were getting 13 kilowatt hours from the battery. So that leads me to believe that, you know, even though we're charging during the day, then the hot tub heater comes on, which obviously is drawing three kilowatts, I think. The, the battery is able to offset some of that and then the heater for the hot tub switches back off and obviously the solar is still going strong and it charges up the battery a bit more. So even though we only have 9.7 kilowatt hours of usable capacity, the battery is still getting more than 100% usage in the day. So that's really nice and kind of, again, proves that that load offsetting by having the battery works really, really well. Digging into the north and south arrays um, is something that I really wanted to do in these videos. So, so let's do that. Um, the figures I have that you can see at the moment are actually from the 30th of October. So it counts the 1st to the 30th of October. I wasn't able to get them on the 31st, but this is a pretty representative picture. We're just missing uh, one day at the end. So I guess each panel maybe produced 32 to 33 kilowatt hours on the south side and 10 on the north side, as I said earlier. Overall, the panels on the south side have performed as I would expect, um, and I'm pretty pleased with it. There's one outlier panel, and it's consistently an outlier, um, and that's the one in the bottom right, uh, number 102, and that's producing 34 kilowatt hours versus the rest that are somewhere in the region of 32. That leads me to believe that maybe it's slightly better as a slightly better binned one. Maybe it would have almost made the cut as a 405 watt panel rather than a 400 watt panel. So that's really nice. Um, obviously I would have liked if all of them had been slightly higher, uh, but that is not how the silicon lottery works um, because it's not really a lottery because as I said, they're gonna bin these products uh, depending on what uh, quality they are and they'll either become 405s or 410s. Um, so yeah, the 400 watt uh, panel clearly slightly better uh, uh, in that one, because there's no real reason for it to perform better. Um, there's no obstructions in the way in any of these panels. There was no real major issues with um, bird droppings or the like. So those panels just pretty much um, performed as I expect. Looking at the north side, um, I'm not surprised to see the ones on the far left of the roof do slightly better. Uh, they are the least um, likely to get any shade. There is a, a couple of poles that can cause shade in the back. So that's not surprising to see those performing the best. Um, and the panel that performed the worst in the top right for 9.18 kilowatt hours uh, does suffer from a lot of bird droppings, unfortunately. And that's why we've seen slightly less um, performance there. And that's a good reminder for being able to clean your panels if you can. Um, I did have a solution for it, but that particular one's quite hard to reach. So I'm kind of rethinking that at the moment. And that's something I need to look into. A uh, bit of a winter project, perhaps. But overall, I mean, we are seeing a third of production on the north side in October versus the south. And that is higher than I would have expected. And it bodes well for the rest of the year. I have no doubt that it's going to decline in November and December. But actually, a third in October is great because that means it's also going to be a third in March. And, you know, to me, that's that's acceptable performance. Um, that means that in March, we're already going to be producing a real good amount of power. And I look forward to it greatly. I'm not sure there's a huge amount more that I can I can really um, say. I mean, comparing this to September where we produced 500 kilowatt hours, the weather was better in September, uh, generally speaking. So again, that's not massively surprising, but it is nice to see that 
overall, um, without the hot tub, we would have been able to cover the majority of our usage. And it's good to see that the battery still plays a big role even in October. Um, it's not being charged from the grid, so it's only from solar. So that's pretty good. Um, and I'm quite glad that, you know, we're still managing to provide a fair amount of power. Obviously, as I said, November, a slightly worse story, um, but that's pretty pretty much what you'd expect. The last thing that I thought I'd address is the projected figures versus what we actually produced. And the projected figure by Solar Edge's platform was 382 kilowatt hours. So we've beaten that by five kilowatt hours, but it does show how accurate it can be. Um, I know it's not as accurate for November and it's shaping up not to be quite as accurate for December, but the fact that we are pretty much bang on um, just shows that you know, if you are setting up and, and planning your own solar system, um, solar install, then having a look at the Solar Edge uh, designer will allow you to get a pretty accurate idea of what your system's going to produce. And it's not that difficult to use. And you are allowed to sign up and use it even as a standard uh, sort of prospective system owner. So I would um, definitely suggest that you do so. But hopefully you found this useful. Um, October's figures were pretty good and pretty much what I and Solar Edge indeed expected. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased and come back in about a week's time for the November video where <laughs> you'll see worse figures and probably worse performance from the north side of the uh, panels as well. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, pop them in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe as it really helps me out. Thank you very much for watching. I hope I see you again next time. Goodbye.